Dan Cochimilio here with NorCal Sports Network with a special video on the Juan Soto sweepstakes as they are about to get hot here. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. This is, again, NorCal Sports Network. Appreciate you watching. Make sure if you're not a subscriber to this channel that you do hit the like and subscribe as uh, we really appreciate you uh, following us. Guys, I want to get right into this. It's going to get hot and heavy here as now we are entering in the first week of free agency and the Juan Soto sweepstakes are heating up and it's going to, it's not going to happen overnight, but it's going to be a tense battle. And I think it comes down to the two New York teams, the Mets and the Yankees. I think it's Steve Cohen versus Hal Steinbrenner. And possibly you get the Dodgers involved. Maybe the Giants, they're going to try. But the one thing, the one thing I believe that's going to keep the Giants from being able to obtain the services of Juan Soto is what Scott Boris says. And Scott Boris says this about Juan Soto. He wants, let me see if I can find the quote here. He wants a team that is going to win on an annual basis. Okay. I just lost the spot here. I apologize. But Juan Soto wants to play for a team that is a annual winner, okay? And it's reported as recently as just a y yesterday that it would be an absolute bombshell development if Soto picks a team other than the New York Yankees or New York Mets in free agency. While the Yankees are seen as the front runners to win the Soto sweepstakes largely because he enjoyed being with the club this past season. Numerous industry insiders have noted that Mets owner Steve Cohen can outbid the Yankees' Hal Steinbrenner for any one talent. That is the key. It's going to get over $700 million. I've been telling you this here at NorCal Sports Network. And don't be shocked if it gets closer to $800 million. That's my opinion. A story from last week indicated that Soto is fully prepared to wait until the middle or end of spring training in, in March to receive the contract he wants. Multiple re reporters have speculated that at least $700 million could be attached to the 26-year-old's next deal. Okay, that's coming out right now. I don't think this thing stretches into March or spring training personally. I think this deal is going to build to a crescendo and I think it's going to get played up during the winter meetings in December. It would not shock me if the Dodgers get involved in this. The fact that Soto wants to play for an annual winner tells me the Dodgers are in play here. I mean, what other team? has been to the playoffs every year since 2013. Only the L.A. Dodgers have been an annual winner. Look, Soto's going to sign for anywhere between 10 to 14 years. He's going to want to go to the playoffs on a regular basis. So I don't think he signs with the San Francisco Giants. Sorry to disappoint us San Francisco Giants fans, but... The Giants are not annual winners. They've been to the playoffs once since 2017. Once. Think about that. You got 17, 18, 19, and 20. The Giants didn't make the playoffs, and they made it in 21 with a record 107 win uh, in the regular season. And then 22, 3, and 4 have been disastrous. Now that Buster Posey is involved, Buster is a winner, and Buster is going to want to win, and he's going to come in with deep pockets. It's been reported that the Giants will not be outbid by anybody and that they have deep pockets too. But 
when it comes down to it, does Soto want to sign with a team that has made, been to the playoffs one time in the previous eight seasons? I just don't see it. I don't see it. I think he goes to the Mets or the Yankees or the Dodgers. If the Dodgers ante up and the Dodgers put the money out and they're willing to pay $700 million plus between seven and eight, and a lot of that could be deferred, I think the Dodgers have an outstanding chance of landing Juan Soto. But so do the Yankees and the Mets. The Mets have not been annual winners. OK, the Yankees have been more consistent making the playoffs, but nobody's been as consistent as the L.A. Dodgers. So I think this thing definitely comes down to those three teams. Is there a sleeper out there? Um, you know, Giants fans you'd like to think you're a sleeper, but I don't see it. Now, the Padres with A.J. Preller, but their owner, you know, Peter Sindler passed away recently as last year. So I don't know if the Padres would spend the money, that amount of money, to obtain Juan Soto. They did have him, obviously, for a year and a half, but I don't think that's going to take place. But let's um, – let me just pull up – something else for you to look at here from Brian Cashman and this battle between the Yankees and the Mets. This is an article that uh, recently came out. Yankees general manager, Brian Cashman discussed the team's intentions to re-sign outfielder Juan Soto, emphasizing this importance to the franchise. But he also acknowledged the competitive landscape stemming from Mets owner Steve Cohen's significant financial resources, which could impact the Yankees' chances of retaining Soto. Because Soto is probably going to go to the highest bidder. That's just the way it's going to work with Soto. Unless, if the Yankees are going to match it, I think they get him. But if the Yankees just get so far outbid, because Steve Cohn's worth like $29 billion with a B, okay? And he's the man. He doesn't have to go to the board of directors like Buster Posey's going to have to. He's just the man. And he's got businesses all over where the Yankees and Hal Steinbrenner, their money comes basically from the Yankees. Steve Cohn's got businesses all over the place and stocks all he's got to do is sell off a couple of stocks and just say you know what i'm gonna go 800 million dollars for juan soto because i'm i can and i'm not gonna lose i'm gonna not definitely lose to my rival across town in the bronx no i'm bringing juan soto to the mets and i'm bringing him to queens new york and then, of course, you got the Dodgers who can just tout, hey, why not join three Hall of Famers and we'll have a team of four Hall of Famers? It'll be Shohei Otani, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and Juan Soto. Four Hall of Famers. And what do the Giants have to offer? Hey, you could be the man. You could be the sole man. You'll be the king of San Francisco but you might finish in fourth place for the next several years. I don't think that's that appealing to Juan Soto. So I'm saying it's the Yankees, Mets, or Dodgers. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I would bet it's one of those three teams, and it's going to be between seven and $800 million is when it gets all settled. Okay? Listen to this. By the numbers, Brian Cashman mentioned – a need to strengthen the team to compete with the Mets' financial capabilities. Juan Soto's re-signing could significantly affect the Yankees' lineup and performance moving forward. Yes, but while Cashman expressed awareness of the Mets' financial advantage, it remains uncertain how that will translate into actual signings, as player decisions often hinge on factors beyond finances, such as a team's culture and performance. So. Yeah, I don't see 
the Giants. As much as the Giants are going to be mentioned in this video, I think, or in this uh, this negotiations and free agency, I think the Giants end up getting played again just to Scott Boris drive up the prices because once he gets a big offer, if Posey comes up, you know, let's say the bids are in the 600 million range to 650 and Posey comes out and says, we're willing to go seven, 750. Boris is just going to take that to New York and LA and uh, they're just going to pony up and the Giants number will get used against them. That's how I see it. So if you disagree or agree, would love to hear your comments in the comments section. Please uh, make note of that. Also, if uh, you're, as I mentioned at the top of this video, if you're not a uh, subscriber to NorCal Sports Network, please hit that like and subscribe button. Go ahead and just click on the subscribe. You'll get notified if you click on the notifications bell every time we put out a video or we go live. And we do go live here on NorCal Sports Network almost every day. We're covering Golden State Warriors basketball live after every game. San Francisco Giants post-game shows, 49ers, and anything happening nationally in the sports world. So we've got it all covered for you here on NorCal Sports Network. And just want to shout out to our sponsor, Chapman Law Group. Chapman Law Group is in Marin County. They cover all of the San Francisco Bay Area, but they're also licensed in all of California. So if you need any legal matters, please give our friends at Chapman Law Group a call at 415-613-9483. If they can't help you out, they'll refer you to someone who can. But uh, Chapman Law Group, a definite friend of NorCal Sports Network, and let them know NorCal Sports Network sent you. Guys, thanks for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Please hit the like button to this video as it pushes it out to more and more people. And please subscribe to NorCal Sports Network. We've got a lot. Check out our videos on the channel. We got a lot of player interviews, a lot of great interviews from many top major league executives, past, present. We appreciate you being part of NorCal Sports Network. And uh, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comments section. Take care.